two times Angel Michael faced Satan. Number 1. The Body of Moses In Jude verse 9, an event is described that is not found anywhere else in the Bible. Michael had a struggle with Satan about the body of Moses, but what that entailed is not defined. Jude verse 9 But Michael the archangel, when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him an abuse of judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. This event transpires in Jude. It is not unlikely that Satan wanted to know the spot so that he could have a shrine built there. Then Israel would turn to the idolatrous worship of Moses' bones. As the angelic representative of the people of Israel, Michael would strive to preserve the people from this form of idolatry by keeping the burial site secret. Moses was blocked from entering the Promised Land because of his disobedience at the waters of Meribah Kadesh. He led the Israelites to the very edge of Canaan and was given a glimpse of the land, but he was not allowed to enter it. At the close of Moses' life, God gave Moses a peek at the land he had left Egypt for. Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, and that was it. God wanted him home. Moses gave up the spear. Moses died according to the word of the Lord. After death comes a burial, as in the case of Moses. But verse 6 contains one of the most remarkable statements about the whole great calling of Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 6. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no man knows where his burial place is to this day. Moses is the only individual in the Bible whom God personally buried. Did you know that? The Lord then hid the tomb. What drove him to do that? Because that grave would have been turned into a shrine. But the critical point is this. Even if Michael is an archangel, he still did not presume to speak reproachfully to the one who rules in the realm of demons and he left all such rebuking to God. Michael, the archangel, is represented in the Bible in Daniel, Jude, and Revelation texts as a fighter angel who contends in spiritual combat. The word archangel means angel of the highest rank. Most angels in the Bible are described as messengers, whereas Michael is represented in all three books as contending, resisting, or standing against evil spirits and principalities. Michael is the name of the archangel. That name implores the question, who is comparable to God? Michael is introduced to us by the prophet Daniel. Michael refused to render judgment presumptuously. Instead, he simply announced the Lord's rebuke. This rebuke uses language that is identical to that found in Zechariah chapter 3 verse 2, in which the Lord rebukes Satan for his accusations leveled against Joshua, who was the high priest. Despite the fact that he possesses a significant deal of authority, Michael continues to show total submission to the Lord. The righteous angels have a rank and are submissive to authority. When you consider how powerful Michael is, it makes the archangel's submission to God all the more stunning and wonderful. It is clear to see that the act of submitting oneself is never intended to strip an individual of their strength, purpose, or value. Even Michael the archangel did not fight the enemy on his own authority, but spoke in the Lord's name. Michael considered his office and position with reverence, Lucifer had been created as the highest creature. Before his fall, Satan seems to have had the most significant privileges ever accorded to a creature. Satan belongs to the cherub class of angelic beings, and these are probably of the greatest class and highest order. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. The expressions, 
you had the seal of perfection, and full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, indicate that he was the greatest of all creatures. The figurative language of this verse speaks of his exquisite perfection. Not only was he an anointed leader, but he was twice called a guardian, covering cherub. This could refer to his role as a guardian, an honor guard, and proclaimer of God's glorious presence and holiness. He seems to have been in the very presence of God, for he walked in the midst of the stones of fire. Perfection. This term summarizes his personal and moral qualities. He had the seal of perfection and was perfect in beauty. He was perfect or blameless in his ways from the day he was created until his first sin. Though cast from his exalted position, Satan retained some great dignity. The passage indicates that his influence and power was felt. This is a lesson that both you and I must learn. Many Christians have yet to learn to bow even to God. You and I, my friend, are creatures. He is the Creator. What gives you and I the right to question anything He does? Don't get me mistaken. We all struggle with doubts. But we must acknowledge that God is both the Creator and the Redeemer. And He is the one who cares for us. But our God is exalted, holy, and righteous, and just. He never makes a mistake. Everything He does is correct so you and I can trust Him. But do we do that? Do we acknowledge His authority? Do we value His person? When men are called to account, the Lord Jesus Christ will say, You said, Lord, Lord, but you did not do what I commanded. Each went his or her own way and did what was right in his or her own eyes. This is the image of humanity. So how about you? How am I doing today? What an example Michael the Archangel is for us. Whatever the plans of Satan, we know that it could not have been good. He steals, kills, and destroys. While these strategies do not appear to be subtle, Satan can make even stealing, killing, and destroying appear to be subtle. He has the power to steal God's word from the heart of anyone who hears it by asking, Has God really said? Now Michael, according to this account, stands up in defense of Moses and in the zeal of an upright and bold spirit says to Satan, The Lord rebuke thee. Number 2. The War in Heaven War breaks out in heaven with Michael and his angels on one side and the dragon and his angels on the other. This is in the middle of the tribulation. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael the archangel and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought. Revelation chapter 12, verses 8 and 9. But they were not strong enough and did not prevail and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the age-old serpent who was called the devil and Satan. He who continually deceives and seduces the entire inhabited world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. The dragon is so totally defeated that he loses his position and he and his minions are cast down to the earth. This is not his final fate, however. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 to 3. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he took hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and he threw him into the abyss and shut it and sealed it over him, so that he would not deceive the nations any longer, until the thousand years were completed. After these things he must be released for a short time. 
Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Notice John's report of him. The great dragon, that serpent of old, the devil, Satan, the one who deceives the whole world. After this aborted battle, Satan is then judged and tormented forever. Together with the beast and the false prophet who were cast into the lake of fire at the beginning of the thousand years. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom, dominion, reign of our God, and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our believing brothers and sisters has been thrown down at last. He who accuses them and keeps bringing charges of sinful behavior against them before our God day and night. The announcement continues. Persecuted believers overcame the evil one by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. In faithfulness to him, they sealed their testimony with their blood. Revelation chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith even when faced with death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them in the presence of God. Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you in great wrath knowing that he has only a short time remaining. The heavens can rejoice over the dragon's departure, but it is terrible news for the earth and the sea. The devil knows his time is short, and he is resolved to pour out his outrage as widely as possible. Satan is not presently in hell, though he is certainly headed there. The primary way Satan attacks the people of God is through blasphemy, and he is the accuser of our brethren. Even so, believers have a divine advocate before God named Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. Satan, the adversary, may seek to eradicate God's people, but Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd. John chapter 10 verse 11. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John chapter 10 verse 14. I am the Good Shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. John then offers a simple strategy believers through the ages have employed to overcome Satan's attacks. A threefold plan against the devil's assaults. Covering, confession, and courage. First, the Christian's covering is nothing less than Christ's blood, spilled for their sin. Apart from the blood of Christ, a person remains forever vulnerable to Satan. Second, the Christian's confession is the Word of God. Recall Jesus' successful defense against the devil's temptations was completely due to his use of God's Word. Third, the Christian's courage is indicated by loving Jesus more than life. They did not love their lives to the death. Satan never sleeps, nor does he tire in his repeated attacks on God's people. Christians who think spiritual warfare is an excellent subject to discuss but don't think it affects their lives daily may be vulnerable to spiritual defeat. Good soldiers of Jesus Christ know Satan roams the earth seeking those whom he may devour. We must be ready. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, 
seeking someone to devour. Michael and the forces of heaven defeat the dragon, Satan, and the devil is hurled to the earth. There, enraged, Satan went off to wage war against those who keep God's commands and hold fast to their testimony about Jesus. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. So the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went off to wage war on the rest of her children. Seed. Those who keep and obey the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus, holding firmly to it and bearing witness to him. Confrontation is a necessary evil, and no one enjoys it, but it must be done to rectify, purify, and unify the community. However, there are other angels, and the Bible tells us about their purposes.